Hello everyone, my name is Eric Banson. I am a content author for I Get It. I will be taking you through the I Get It website and going through one of the courses I created within 3D Experience. So let's go ahead and get started. Now I'll be talking today about navigating the I Get It website. I'll discuss some of the I Get It website user interfacing, and then I'll get into the 3D Experience course content, and then we'll actually go through the course I wrote called 3D Experience Creating a Plastic Part Design. And I'll even preview some of the actual videos, and we'll look at some of the projects that you will use when you go to this class. So let's go ahead and get started. When you type in myigetit.com, you come to this page. What you're going to want to do is next is go up to login after have creating a user account and go ahead and type in your username and password and you'll come to this page and then you have the ability to select any of these features on the left. For this demonstration we're going to go right to learning. And within learning we're going to go ahead and go into the catalog up at the top where you'll see other topics within I get it you can select. So let's go ahead and select 3D Experience. Now within 3D Experience you see you have the filter by subcategory which would be releases. All the different releases that we have as our offerings are here. The course that I created is under 3D Experience Release 2020X. Now down here we have choice of selecting courses, assessments, and then topics. Let's go ahead and go under courses and let's scroll down till we find 3D Experience Fundamentals by Creating a Plastic Part. Now at this point we can select it here or we can select it over here to the right where it says start. Now we come to the first page for the course and we can see here that we have an overview, prerequisite, what the intended audience this course is for, a duration, and we have a skill level. We also have recommended courses as well. You might want to take these courses prior to taking this course. We also have a learning time that keeps track of how long you spend, points, and your progress of how far we've gotten through this course. Now below we have the table of contents. Here we'll see that this is broken up into units and within each unit we have a page or document as we call it. And If we select on these arrows they open up the units so that you can see what is covered within the course. Now if you come up over here to the right you see that we can share our course. We can also add or remove as, as a favorite course and then here in the middle we have a little cloud with an arrow which allows us to download the part files. You select on that that will begin the process of downloading the files that you'll be using within this course. When you're all ready Let's go ahead and start the course. Now we can see here on the left we have these units. And within each unit we have a page. Now up here at the top again we have a bar that tells us how far we've gone through this course and we have again downloading the files that are within the course. We can also go through the pages using these arrows and we can always back out by selecting the leave the course button. So let's go ahead and talk about this course. P each page will have a video or it might have a procedure and we'll get into that in a little bit but we can see here let's go ahead and take a look at the course project description. In this course, we'll be reverse engineering the outer housing shell of this drill driver. Now we'll be using it to take measurements from it. So first let's go ahead and take it apart. Once apart, we can take a look at the interior structure of this housing. Now it's a simple basic plastic that we'll be reconstructing. We'll also take measurements from this part. As you can see here, we'll be using digital calipers 
and we'll be measuring in the units of millimeters. Now these will be rough dimensions that we'll use. If you choose, you can also change the design as you feel as you go through the course. The measurements that I'll be giving you will basically be rough dimensions as taken with the calipers as you see here. We'll only be creating the one half of the entire drill driver housing units. So as you go through the course, you can follow along using the dimensions given, or again, you can customize the dimensions to how you feel the part should look. Now within this course, we're going to teach the basics of 3D experience. That means we'll talk about the user interface of 3D experience. We'll get into the graphic manipulation, how to use view section commands, as well as how to import 3D XML models. We'll move on also then into creating a sketch. And if we go ahead and select on these, we'll have a video. We'll also have some description about the topic, such as SmartPick. You can see here we have more information after the video has been done. You can go down and scroll through and also refer back to all of this information as well. If we go down to creating lines, you'll have a video on how to create the lines as well as procedures with step-by-step -step instruction on how to create those lines. Now let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Geometrical sets. This is an important one within this course. We'll review the video, but before that, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the overview. So let's go ahead and take a look at the video. Geometrical sets. The simplest way to think about a geometrical set is as a container for features. What is meant by a container is that it's a place you can organize information pertinent to the design as well as its intent of the part you are modeling. Being that 3D experience is very flexible in what it allows the end user to do. The only steadfast rule about geometrical sets is that they cannot contain solid features, that is, items created in the part design application. One of the most important things to remember when working with standard geometrical sets is that the feature order, or timestamp, is not taken into account. Unlike modeling in a part, body, or an ordered geometrical set, where each feature that is created subsequently becomes the in-work object. So let's go ahead and look at some examples of the differences between the part body, having a geometrical set, and an ordered geometrical set. As we see here, we have a part body and we have a pad that was created within the part body. Now, first of all, we can create geometrical sets by either going up in the specification tree and under our part up here, our main part, we can see that we can go down to the object and we can place in a geometrical set or an ordered geometrical set. Another way is to go down to the section bar and go to structure and within the action bar under structure, we see we have geometrical set. We have a downward arrow button. If we select that, we notice we get both the geometrical set and ordered geometrical set. And we can create them from here as well. Now that we have some here that are already recreated, let's go ahead and open up the geometrical set. Now notice here what we have are some items that are placed in here. And these are basically used as references at this point. So a geometrical set can be used to house or contain, as we talked about earlier, reference entities such as lines, points, or planes. This way you can use the same ones over and over again without having them fall into a timestamp formation, say like under part body or even order geometrical set. Let's go ahead and try to create a solid body within a geometrical set. I'm going to select this one and we're going to define in work object. And I'm going to use plane 4 and let's go ahead under model 
and create a circle. Basically a cylinder we'll create using the pad. And notice right away we get a warning that the current in work object isn't a body. The new solid feature is created after the last feature of the part body. So it's going to bump up our pad to the part body. So I'm going to select OK. It allows to create it. But look what's happened. Our sketch is allowed to be within the geometrical set, but not the solid body. It's placed back into the part body. Now, what I'll able to do here, though, is let you see that if I go ahead back to find an object, work object, and I'm going to go down to the geometrical set object, and in here, we're going to go ahead and reorder children. And notice here I have all the children, so parent-children relationship, and the sketch 7, which is the one I just created, the pad, the circle pad. I'm going to go ahead and notice that I can move it up and down the tree within the geometrical set. And I'm going to leave it there. Now let's go ahead and let's define in work object within our ordered geometrical set. Notice we have a couple of planes in here as well already created. Let's go ahead and select, say, uh, let's go ahead and select plane 7. And let's go ahead and create a quick square. Exit out and let's pad that. And again, we get the same warning as we did before. We can't place a solid body within an geometrical or ordered geometrical set. I'm going to go ahead and we're going to do that anyway and it's going to place this pad into the part body if you notice up here. And it automatically defines your work and object within the part body right with the pad that you created last. But we're going to come back down and I'm going to define work and object in our ordered geometrical set and notice we have our sketches placed here. Now I'm going to go ahead and try to reorder the children. I'm going to select sketch 8, the one I just created. And notice if I try to move it up and down, I can't even move it. And it tells me cannot move this to this position. And that's the example I wanted to show you is that the fluidity of the geometrical set, I can place things in here and I can move them around. Whereas in an ordered geometrical set, it kind of time stamps you and locks you into a certain place of when that was created and what was created and same as a part body. So those are the basic differences with geometrical and ordered geometrical set. Uh, my recommendation is to be build things within a geometrical set. The only thing is you don't know when these things were created. So if someone was to open the model and look at this and you had things in here, you they wouldn't know when they were created, but you can check to see what their parents are by going into the geometrical set. Let's go ahead and define an object, and I'm going to right click, say, like on Sketch. And if we go to Parents Children within the pop up menu, notice that at least we know that Pad 7 is part of the, is the parent and their children's, the, or actually our Sketch. And then, of course, it was created on the Plane 4. And if you actually expand this, we can go ahead and select on it or place your cursor over it and we get plane 4. But it doesn't tell us when it was created within the tree itself under geometrical set. So I highly recommend for you to go down and take a look at the information about geometrical set features and their options in much more detail within the document below. Now let's take a look at the projects because as you learn 3D experience and how to use the features and tools, you'll be then using those features and tools to create a part. If we select on these icons here, which is the project icon, you'll start to learn how to start, name, and save the drill driver body project. Now this particular course, you'll have to save each time you exit out or save your parts as you finish them because each project will build upon the same part as you go through this course. So if we go ahead and go further down into the next 
unit, modeling a plastic product and part design unit, and let's go ahead and select this particular project since it's the last one. Now within the project what you'll see is an overview, a video referencing what you'll be doing to help guide you through the project below. And when you're done watching that, you can then go through the steps creating the part as you go through it, as you see here. Now, if you miss something or if you need a little bit of extra help, you can go refer back to the video, as I said before, as reference and help. Let's go ahead and take a look at the video. In this project, you'll create the interior structure of the drill driver body shell. If we go ahead and take a look at the thicknesses and the depths of the walls of the ribs that are shown here, but you'll be using the stiffener feature in order to create that. Now the dimensions are roughly taken from this actual part, but if you choose, you can make slight changes to the dimensions in this project to customize the design to your own liking. The second half of the video will show how the particular project was created. You can use it as reference when going through the project. In this project, you'll create the interior structure of the drill driver body shell that will support the electric motor, trigger, and forward and reverse button assembly using the feature command stiffener, draft, edge fillet, and pocket commands. So let's go ahead and take a look where we left off from our last project, which was developing vent holes, the ventilation, and the forward reverse button hole. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create all the structure on the inside portion drill driver body. And what we're going to do with that is we're going to use the command stiffener. Now the stiffener is located under model, and it's all the way over here. It stands alone. So what we have to do first is we have to create a sketch and then we can go and activate the stiffener command. So let's go ahead and we're going to be in the ZX plane. And to double check that, let's go ahead and select on our sketch, go to parents, children, and notice here we are in the ZX plane. Now again, we're referencing the model that is downloadable for you to use as reference and as well as this video is reference as you do the project below. So let's go ahead and open it. Here we have the sketch itself. Now if we take a look at it, I'll select on it so I'll highlight the lines. We're just using open lines right here within sketch and we're just basically connecting solids to solids with the lines. Now when you create a stiffener, make sure the line endpoints are within a solid portion and they cross over into another solid area as well as you see here. Again here we, we're using the outer thickness of the body shell. As long as they lie within that area on that plane of those solid features, you'll be able to create the stiffener. Now, you can go ahead and connect these. I, you can add more if you like, but try to stay within the parameters of the project when creating these. You notice we have some down here as well. When we're finished, let's go ahead and exit. And next we're gonna go ahead and I'm going to define and work object of the stiffener. And let's go ahead and open the definition dialog. Now there's two types of stiffener definition options under mode. We can do it from the side or from the top. In this instance, we're going to do it from the top. Now if you don't remember the difference between the two, please go back to the page or document before this project, which is creating a stiffener. It'll go through those details and an example on how to create a stiffener. So basically the thickness is going to be one and a half millimeters. That is the walls are going to be one and a half. And we're going to use a neutral fiber, which means that it's going to be evenly split spacing 
on either side of our line. So we'll have 0.75 material on one side and 0.75 on the other side of the line that we used in the sketch. When we're finished, let's go ahead and select OK. And then here you can see the stiffener walls are created. Now let's go ahead. Now we have to add draft. Let's go ahead and open up the definition dialog. And for our draft, our angle is going to be one and a half degrees. Draft type's constant. Again, all this information is in the project below. And our neutral element is going to be, as you can see here, the wall thickness right here, the purplish color of the drill driver body. And that's going to determine our neutral element and our pull. And here's our arrow. And when we select both sides of every wall that was created in the stiffener, when you're done with that, go ahead and hit OK. And we can take a look at that and see that our draft was created. And we're going to go ahead and create another stiffener. This video goes on a while longer, but you can watch the rest of it at myigetit.com within 3D Experience Fundamentals by creating a plastic part. So in summary, go to myigetit.com to create a login and navigate through the iGetit website. If you're interested in 3D experience, there's an essentials course that you can take along with a lot of other basics and intermediate courses as well as advanced. You can take this course which we just talked about and previewed and reviewed fundamentals by creating a plastic part design. I hope you had a very good session. Thank you for attending. Have a good day.